Hello everyone, how you all doing? Insane Frame here. In the last video, we did a Fallout New Vegas max difficulty with Hardcore enabled without being hit. That was very brutal and very, very hard. So let's do another video, which will be fun. Today we ask, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with the boxing tape? Now, the boxing tape is a very common weapon you can get at the start of the game. Whilst it doesn't require any skill and does fatigue damage allowing us to knock out our opponents, it does struggle quickly defeating our opponents due to its low damage output. So it'd be really interesting to see how it does with this run, as I'm thinking groups of enemies will be a massive, massive hurdle for us. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and explain the rules. We may only use the boxing tape in battle, no glitches or exploits, no modding or cheating, hardcore mode will be enabled and we're going to be playing on the hardest difficulty. So with that out of the way, let's go. Our run starts in Doc Mitchell's house and our first task is naming our character. We go ahead and go for Little Mac as he's an unsung hero in the boxing world. We decide our special stats and in New Vegas, unarmed is scaled by your endurance. So this is what we come up with. We have three perception, 10 endurance, one charisma, seven intelligence, seven agility, and 10 luck. Got to get them crits in where we can, people. Then we have to decide our skills. These numbers represent how good our character is. All you need to know is the higher the number is, the better we are, to a maximum of 100. However, we get to raise three skills by 15 points, which is a very big deal early on, not so much later on. So we go for medicine, unarmed, and survival. Lastly, we decide our traits. These further specialize our character at the cost of a trade-off. We can select up to two of these, so we go ahead and select built to destroy, so we can crit 3% more, but our equipment decays 15% faster. Not too shabby. And our second trait is heavy handed, so we deal more base damage at the cost of dealing less critical damage with our unarmed strike, making our damage more consistent as we leave. Hardcore mode is enabled and the difficulty was set in the main menu. Thank you for the heads up, people, on that one. Um, it's absolutely wonderful that you mentioned it in the comments. Anywho, we buy the box and tape from Chet, so we already have our weapon, which is excellent, and we skip over Prim and go to Major Knight at the NCR outpost to repair the box and tape to max condition, giving plus three damage for 150 caps. Now that's a bargain. Since we're here, we pick up Ranger Jackson's quest to clear the road of ants, as well as Ranger Ghosts to explore Nipton. But we'll do the Nipton quest a little bit later into the future. Next on our list is the aforementioned Prim, which we fast travel to. We opt to save Deputy Beagle, and it's actually quite a challenge for us, as our damage output is really low. And whilst we can knock out enemies if they gang up on us, it's really difficult to mitigate the damage, especially at this point in the game. So we do what we can, we heal up, and we go for round two, and it's very challenging, however we do manage it, and Deputy Beagle is saved. Yay! We speak to Lieutenant Haynes and he wants an additional squad to instill lore to Prim. It'll be free XP if anything else, so everybody wins. We go Powder Ganger hunting to level up and we get our barter up to scratch, as well as our one arm, which sits at a nice 45. As for our perk, we select Confirmed Bachelor, so we do an extra 10% damage against male humanoids. Very good. With our barter up scratch, we'll go to Major Knight, get the additional squad, and Lieutenant Haynes is happy with us, and we get a bunch of free XP. The Prospector Den is next, a raid location, which is free XP for us, so we get some Jackal Gang members and put them down. Then we hunt more Powder Gangers to get to level 4, putting all our points into Unarmed. Go ahead and select the Educator perk, allowing us to get more skill points on our level up, so we're in the clear. It's time to end more Powder Gangers. We beat some of the Powder Gangers on the gate, including Doors, but we retreat after stealing a Powder Ganger outfit, using it as a disguise to blend in. It works perfectly. And we get more XP for our troubles. However, the admin building does prove too much for us, where Eddie is, and we'll need to come back later at some point. We get the ants block in the road and it's pretty decent since we're level 4. Once we kill a few of them we hit level 5, putting points into unarmed and survival. We deal with more wildlife before heading to Nipton and we get Thomas come up to us for some reason. After a fight it's obvious it's all part of his master plan so we do our first curb stomp of the run. Just a warning people, there's going to be a lot of curb stomping in this run. The Jackal Gang, however, keep killing us and we decide to head to New Vegas by sneaking through the Hidden Valley. We curb stomp a Evolved Centaur, leveling us up. With our points, we put it into Medicine so we can last longer in battle and we're going to go for outlasting our opponents since our damage is bad. We double down on our perk, getting Toughness, granting us plus three damage threshold, upping our defense. We then sneak past some Super Mutants and even avoid a Boulder, which to be frank, I've never seen in all my time of playing New Vegas or Fallout as a whole. 
We make it to the New Vegas Medical Clinic and buy ourselves the intelligence implant to up our intelligence to 8, which is very good. With our newfound brains, we head to the Atomic Wrangler and get a single chip for the casino. We play blackjack and we lose, or at minus one earnings with the casino. Todd, just stop being like real life, please, Todd. Anyway, round two, we get a single chip and we play to our 10 luck, gaining up the limit of caps we're allowed, which is excellent. With our winnings, we hit the strip and we visit Mr. House to turn in the snow globes for 4,000 caps. Then we make our way to Novak to visit a very important character for us, Ranger Andy. He wants us to check on Ranger Base Charlie, but the Legion have attacked it. We then return to Ranger Andy and he is somewhat somber at the news, but he teaches us a unarmed strike to stun our opponents. It is a backwards power attack, mind you, but it will let us curb stomp more easily, especially against melee attackers, which will be important later on. Once that is dealt with, we go back to the clinic and get the subdermal implant, improving our defense by four. It's quite decent for 8,000 caps and a personal favorite of mine. So, guilty as charged, I guess. We also get Little Max on combat armor, as it suits him, and we go back to the Powder Gangers, we go to the admin building, we take them on, getting us a level up. We max out our unarmed, and we go for some science, and we also meet this guy, and we do the right thing. The legions show up, and we listen to them for once, and then hand the quest in to an NCR soldier. We go to the Tops Casino and find Benny leveling up in the process and go for science. As for our perk, we select Toughness Rank 2, so our damage threshold is improved by plus 3. Now, due to our situation, we go talk to Benny and he gives us the presidential suite. We know he's going to stab us in the back, but we go there anyway and he quadruple crosses us. His body cards come up, but we can't attack them without our boxing tape, so we make a run for it. We go straight to Yes Man and we ask where Benny went. Now, I admit this looks bad, but it's all going exactly according to plan, so don't worry. Veterans of New Vegas will know exactly what I'm on about. We see the envoy working with the Legion and accept his invitation. We also level up, going for medicine, helping our healing items that little bit more. We stop off at Novak once again and talk to Boone, who wants us to find his wife's killer. We complete that easy enough and get the first recon beret, increase our crit chance by 5%, as well as providing plus one perception. Pretty damn good. Cottonwood Cove is the next destination and the Legion lets us pass through. We go to the fort and we meet Kaiser, who wants us to go to one of Mr. House's facilities located in camp. But Benny is now a prisoner and oh how the tables have turned. Just for that we're going to be working with the Legion as it's all just working out perfectly. We get our weapons back as well as the platinum chip and Mr. House gives us some unique dialogue. We level up after destroying a turret and we go ahead and put points across the board as well as grabbing the finesse perk allowing us to deal more critical hits. Since we can't destroy the reactors in the bunker, we opt to power up the Securitron army instead. We can use Yes Man to neutralize the threat anyway, and it gives plenty of XP. Kaiser then single-handedly gives us the best reward, which is to decide how Benny dies. Now, we can only select one option without breaking the rules, but it's the best option by far, and that's the crucifixion. Anyway, we talk with Kaiser and he wants Mr. House dealt with and we're all too happy to oblige. And on our way out, we say hello to Benny on the cross, which is comedy gold at its best. To add to Benny's demise, we get a single chip at the top's casino. I managed to get over 11,000 caps. That'll teach you to quadruple cross us. Enjoy your cross, Benny. We use our winnings to buy two extra implants and we decide to get plus one agility and perception whilst also grabbing some supplies. Next up is the Boomers. It only takes two attempts this time, which is nice. And we're introduced to Mother Pearl, who wants us to help out at the Boomers base, which is okay, I guess. We listen to the story on the wall and it's enough to let us have the firing mechanism for the Legion. You fool, Mother Pearl. We report back to base and install the firing mechanism in the howitzer. We go to the Lucky 38 and I can't believe how easy this is as we just go into his terminal and access his control room. Then we go to the lift and get to see Mr. House's true form. We hilariously enough have to hit him several times but he's taken care of and a level up is granted. We put all of our points into melee and we upload Yes Man into the computer. Because we upgraded Securitrons at the outpost, Yes Man narrates the upgrade scene. This is actually really cool and we get mounted experience for our trouble and a smiling monitor. What's not to love? We report to Kaiser and he wants the boomers on our side or dealt with. Well, we can certainly oblige and following our orders, we begin curb stomping loyal and then do the same to Pearl, really respecting our elders here with good old curb stomps. But we take it one step further and we decide to unalive the doctor and all their patients to level up. Not gonna lie, this feels pretty bad actually. 
but we put points into melee and as for our perk we go for piercing strike allowing us to ignore up to 15 points of our opponent's armor when striking them unarmed we test it out on a bunch of boomers they do rough us up a bit but they're good experience and honestly it's a lot of fun oh lil mac you're becoming a lil villain now guys is impressed with how we handled the situation and gets a pain in his head so he goes and lies down as for our task, we have to go to the White Glove Society and get them to ally with us, which goes absolutely terribly, and we begin fighting them. With the White Glove Society dealt with and dead in our wake, Kaiser is not impressed and his health deteriorates more, but manages to task us with destroying a Brotherhood bunker. Okay, so normally I'd slip in and detonate the bunker, but there's too much XP about. So upon arrival, we manage to bait the guy who approaches us onto the stairs, and where we hit him in vats, he goes down, and it takes a lot of curb stomping. These guys are extremely resilient, but once on the ground, they're useless. We retreat, kill a couple of scorpions, level up, and put all of our points into medicine, making healing items that much more effective. We then do the same with two guards and get lucky, stunning one of them, and then immediately stunning the second guy so we can curb stomp them, putting them both out of the fight. There are two more paladins and hilariously we disarm one and pick up his weapon so he can't use it and the second one we just pummel until we do enough fatigue damage and he's ko then more curb stomping in shoes paladin ramos is really easy as he has his head exposed which means no defense and that's another one curb stomped out of existence we uppercut a paladin and then curb stomp him and we get interrupted as well and we manage to beat them down then get back to work by curb stomping we get to the second level and deal with the scribes easy enough, but shortly after, we do the unthinkable and curb stomp. Not one, but two paladins. The elder's paladins, to be precise. Then, well, I think at this point you get it. Lots of stumpy stomps on that person's face. With everyone dealt with, we get to the head scribes card, initiate the self-destruct sequence, and run out of the bunk from all the people we curb stomped. Don't worry, we have to use our ankles to stomp more enemies later. We report back to Kaiser, and he is very impressed and wishes to speak with us in private. We level up and we put points into medicine and melee weapons. For our perk, we go for fight the power so we get a plus two damage resistance and a plus five critical chance against NCR, Legion and Brotherhood of Steel, as long as they are wearing their faction armor. Pretty good for the Hoover Dam battle. Kaiser comes clean with us about his health. Due to our high medicine skill, we diagnose him with a tumor. And I would like to say off the record, I didn't know this was a thing as I never sided with the Legion, but there you go. Back to the game, we go to the New Vegas Medical Clinic, get some surgical tools, and whilst we're here, might as well buy the health regen implant, because why not? Lucius states we have to report to him while Kaiser is out of action, but he won't be for long, as we successfully perform an operation, and then we're sent to assassinate the NCR president. A NCR hit squad is sent to deal with us, but we disarm them and take their weapons. We also level up, putting points into medicine and repair. We can now look like the guy on the cover of the games if we choose to. This is amazing. To get more XP, we go to Helios 1, do the quest to realign the solar panels and go into the main tower to redistribute the power to all of the region. Then we get to the Repcon test site to grind some more XP, but whilst we're doing this, we fail the assassination attempt. I didn't know it was a time mission, but there you go and kaiser really isn't impressed but says his forces are ready at the dam i then grind off screen for a bit so we're level 18 so our perks are living anatomy letting us see our opponent's armor and health more accurately and we also go for paralyzing palm which does exactly what it says on the tin and it is very nice for our box and tapes fatigue damage we also buy some decent armor from the gun runners and return to kaiser to begin the battle for hoover dam we meet the legate in the legate's camp and he tasks us with dealing with general oliver and his men at the power plant in hoover dam not a problem the initial attack on the bridge is easy as we have legion soldiers helping us out and it's very nice the second half of the bridge is not so fun and we take one unit of medex on one unit of psycho so we can take and deal more damage allowing us to push through that little bit more tip in the battle in our favor we head to the tower and we use the sink to fully heal up inside hoover dam we have three heavy ncr troopers we single one out and take him down and proceed to stomp on him the other two are dealt with in very much the same way by stomping and we also take a super sledge to the face so it does hurt a lot but we're okay considering so we pull through. Legion forces then help us secure in the power plant and all is well. General Oliver is then very smug and he thinks that he can hold out. However, he does not know of our stomping abilities and the NCR troops charge in. We deal with them no problem as we have cover and they need line of sight but they can't punch for our armor so it's pretty trivial. 
We find another sink up ahead and heal. We're ready for the next part and this room is really annoying. But we stun the NCR Ranger with our uppercuts in that and proceed to do more curb stomping. And this guy has a whopping 10 super pack, so yeah. As we go through the room, it's important we don't set off all the traps, but there's a ranger with an anti-material rifle constantly shooting at us. However, we time our movements for when he reloads and we close the distance and we do the same thing and uppercut him. Then do our favourite thing and go back to the curb stomping. We disarm all the mines leading up to the upstairs and when we do, we get the hardest part of the run. There's a lot of NCR heavy troopers here with super sledges and good up and close personal firearms to cripple us. General Oliver walks out with two heavy NCR troopers, so what we do is we head into a room and wait for one of the troopers using our terrible sneak to our advantage. We jump the NCR heavy trooper with that, it works very well, and then General Oliver shows up, and we hit him as fast as we can until he's done and we end him. The trooper who we knocked down earlier tries to rearm himself with Oliver's weapon, he is also put down along with him. As for Oliver's two guards, we have a plan for them. We fall back to the trap room and trigger all the traps, and since they follow us, all the traps go off whilst they're behind us, and they get hit full force by some explosives. And since they're heavily damaged, we easily curve stomp one of them and uppercut the second. That's two less heavy troops to deal with, and there's three heavy troopers left. So we heal up, and the ranger palm is our best friend, and this is the reason I got it, because we can palm them to the ground and stomp on them and then run away. We have one of the soldiers using Oliver's 44 Magnum and Oliver is trying to get us from beyond the grave, but we also have two people with super sledges chasing us. After a few minutes, we manage to palm strike one of the troopers and stomp him enough to take him out of action. The second soldier goes for a wall and is stomped out. The last soldier, we just punch him and let Little Mac take his anger out. We level up, but as you can see, our body is very crippled and thanks to the super sledges, we limp back to the legger and he says he can't wait to conquer a sacred land known as California. But with that complete, we complete the run answering the question, can you beat New Vegas with box and tape? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Well, I do like myself in an arm run in the Fallout verse, but that was actually a lot harder than the no-hit run. I mean, sure, we can take damage, but our damage output was definitely the main obstacle. KOing people was definitely the best way of doing combat, and just curb stomping became, like, a staple of our tactic. It was knock them out, get them down, curb stomp. But still, it was, a re it was really cool. It posed a very interesting challenge, and it was um, certainly something we had to think about. Also, the next video will be the 4,000 sub special, so stay tuned for that. It was a lot of fun making it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys like it. So I really, really, really hope you enjoy it. And as always, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. So like the video if you like the vid, subscribe if you're new, and comment down below. Always love to hear from you guys. But once again, thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. You're absolutely amazing. Have a wonderful day and keep being awesome. And I hope you have a great time. Stay tuned for the next one. And this is Insane Frames signing off. See you later, everybody.